Now, we speak about a statement that's just been put out by the Jacob Zuma Foundation in which the former president, Jacob Zuma, um, makes various statements, but particularly with the uh, Zondo, to do with the Zondo Commission, and he said uh, ostensibly that he would have welcomed an opportunity to uh, lead evidence uh, before an independent judge presiding over the State Capture Commission to explain an independent to an independent judge why he felt Judge Zondo was biased and conflicted in hearing his evidence uh, by the commission. He takes it as far back as the decision made by the former public protector advocate Truly Matonzela and why she bugged uh, precedence, as he said, by making recommendations which he felt uh, were uh, completely ag went completely against the grain and he even speaks about the Constitutional Court as well, how it's gone completely against the grain uh, with regards to usurping powers that he believed really should have rested with the lower courts. To talk a little bit more about this is the Jacob Zuma Foundation spokesperson, Zainere Manya. Very good evening to you, Mr. Manya. Thank you so much for speaking to us. I suppose uh, one would be curious to say there have been many developments. Um, why the statement now? Is there a particular significance to releasing the statement now? Yeah, first let me apologize. I'm at the back of Mumbai, somewhere in KZN. Okay. Um, yeah, look, uh, no, no, President Zuma just wanted to speak out so that the country must know directly from him what his attitude is on the state of affairs and uh, what he thinks. And he's very distraught uh, that uh, he thinks that uh, the country is descending into a dictatorship of sorts. He's very distraught that uh, the justice he fought for all these years in prison, in Robben Island and everywhere, that uh, that seems to have come to zero. Uh, he's very disappointed that the judges have decided that uh, even though the constitution is instructing them to obey international law because the constitution uses the word must uh, and yet the justices of this country have just taken it upon themselves to mm. say they're not obliged uh, to that uh, international treaty so president zuma is a, a disappointed man but uh, he, his hopes are high that uh, justice will finally prevail he is not going to sleep up until uh, justice is seen to be done. So let's talk about some of the major, the salient points that he raises. He, he talks about uh, a, a, a people, the South Africans, who are blind uh, to some of these things which he says have been hypnotized by a long-standing anti-Zuma narrative. But he points to what he said was... Um, the unilaterally usurping of presidential powers to appoint a commission by the former public protector, uh, Tuli Matonzela. Uh, talk to us about this and why he goes back to this matter now. I think what President Zuma is trying to do with it is to deal with the matter at its foundational level. Mm. That uh, this thing was wrong from the beginning, how it was set up. From the beginning, it violated the constitution. The power to appoint the commission uh, rests only with the president. But in this case, the public protector took it upon herself to take powers away from President Zuma and gave them uh, to uh, the chief justice, uh, as it were. I mean, President Zuma in that whole situation was uh, left purely as a clerk just to sign at the bottom. Part of the recommendations from the public protector was that uh, the the Chief Justice must give President Zuma a list of one to choose from. If that is not uh, dictating to him we must appoint, then I don't know what is. So President Zuma is saying from there, uh, that was a, a first instance of the ground uh, being shaken. Uh, the constitutionality of this, of this uh, commission is itself uh, in a, a, a questionable, uh, as it were. So he says, uh, a fruit from a rotten tree, basically, uh, can never be eaten. It, it will also be uh, spoiled. He makes That's the principle he's taking. 
he makes a very interesting point to say this actually points to the issue that he's been raising uh, that um, over the independence of the judiciary saying that the public protector usurping his powers basically gives credence to the fact that uh, uh, there is a possibility of a lack of independence by the judiciary and he also points to the constitutional court by not following the terms of the commission's act of 1947 is he effectively saying Saying that uh, the apex court in itself, including the justices, interfered? No, he is. Well, firstly, he say that uh, the mere fact that that decision was made, uh, as, if, as if when it's him appointing a judge, he would basically be appointing somebody he knows. And uh, so that on its own impugns the integrity of the justices of this country in the first instance. Uh, this is the point uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that that seeks to make. So he's then saying that uh, the constitutional court itself hasn't been consistent even with his own jurisprudence, where, for instance, uh, P.W. Border, who has also uh, dealt with also had an issue around the commission, the TRC at the time. But how he was dealt with uh, is very different. He was dealt with properly in terms of the law. Uh, but in terms of President Zuma, it would appear that there was a Zuma law that was put into place. And this is the issue that is lamenting, that why is it that when it's him that uh, would decide to throw the justice book out of the window and invent new laws just to deal with him? That's what is lamenting. Okay. So he goes on finally to say that he would have loved to appear before the commission, but uh, before uh, what he would have seen as an independent judge and not somebody who is compromised, according to uh, what I'm reading between the lines here. So let's say for uh, argument's sake that there is another opportunity. Is he saying anybody but Zondo would he respect an appearance before the State Capture Commission? That's a correct position, yes. President Zuma is very firm on this. And in fact, he, his reasons are well articulated in his uh, recusal application in the High Court as well. Uh, so he's very firm on this to say he has all, in fact, the whole narrative that uh, President Zuma did not want to table to present himself at the commission. That narrative is actually a fake narrative. That narrative is wrong. The right position is that all President Zuma ever wanted was a neutral chairperson. This is all he ever wanted, a neutral chairperson. Uh, and now, if instead of getting a neutral person, he gets thrown into jail uh, for 15 months. Uh, that's the kind of justice that he got. And he says that uh, uh, he never thought, in fact, that the courts, the, the highest court of the land, would even entertain this case. And he backs that up because he says uh, this court has rejected a lot of cases. Uh, part of the cases, for instance, that this court had rejected is one of uh, Colin Corsa who was killed in Alexander uh, by the army. Uh, even the DA case was also dismissed. Uh, and this was a, a case regarding the pandemic, something that has been killing uh, people worldwide. Now he's saying, if this court could dismiss those weighty cases why was an issue of a contempt of a, a commission uh, uh, become relevant for the constitutional okay. court, except that it was now himself? That's what he's arguing. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Jacob Zuma Foundation spokesperson Zwanele Maini, the former president, going on to thank his legal team for standing by him, signing off the letter by saying, I wear the badge of being a political prisoner with the greatest of a pride, signed Jacob Gerlilche. He said,